This is my work colleagues Lee and Tracy's van. Uh, they've come up through the Lake District with us and it's a project that Lee's been doing over the last few months now and so we're going to have a look at his van. He's a photographer as well, so he's. I'm already been, vlogging. <laughs> so, this is how long have you been take, done it? Doing now, a couple of months, is it? We really started in earnest in January. January. That's where everything. A lot yeah. planning beforehand, but uh, most of the mechanical bits and get stuff ready. But yeah, January is when it really started to happen, and we started getting some bits that were more sort of to do with the insides of the van. Mm -hmm. um, and then the big thing is when you tipped us off about going up to Magnum Motorhomes, <laughs> that made a big difference. So yeah. let us grab the carpet and we were really sort of a bit between the teeth then. So it was a builder's van. A very much a builder's van, full of concrete and various assorted uh, bits of building wares. Very, very messy inside. And once we stripped it back and discovered exactly how much concrete was in it and got it all cleared out, it gave us a good basis to mm -hmm. see where we were going. Now, it is a long wheelbase of Varro, we didn't want the short wheelbase. Mm -hmm. There just wasn't going to be enough room for what we were looking to do. Um, and originally we were thinking, like, yeah, do we do the same as everybody else has done, like rock and roll bed and sort of cupboards in the corner? Uh, but we decided to do something a bit different and came up with the idea of having a workstation sort of with photographers. So it's handy to sort of have a day out in the van, come back and have to sort of yeah. edit photos and do bits and bobs on the laptop. So the idea of having the table in the middle and two benches seems to make a lot of sense. Um, went through a couple of iterations design-wise, but this is the one that we came up with. So the left-hand bench, as you look at it there, that lifts up and gives you access to the underside. But at night, pull the, sort of the closest tab to you and that actually slides out. This one then slides out to meet it and forms a bed piece and the cushions fold down into the bed so literally so you've got quite a nice big double bed there it's a reasonable you? size yeah. double bed yeah. it's not full enough. i think it's about five foot six which i'm about five foot eight so it's not too bad i, I can't do a full stretch on it but, but you got the, the the width though haven't you yeah so, got plenty of width yeah. so it's, it's about the size of a uh a, a small twin so mm. it's not too bad but with the table in the middle it just works brilliantly mm -hmm. and that folds down and sort of is stowed up against the back doors at night. Mm -hmm. uh, so it takes up no room at all. And you've uh, cladded the roof. Yep, so and, and lights. Uh, cladded with lights. There's a uh, Dometic positive pressure vent up there, which works brilliantly. You wouldn't have thought it'd actually shift as much air as it does. So no electrics required, just gets on with it. Mm -hmm. um, we were going to have a sink unit, but in the end we decided collapsible bowl and just a simple sort of twin hob burner mm -hmm. uh, with separate gas bottles is about all we'd need. But it then gives us lots of workspace when that's not it out. It does, yeah. And the tap. Fantastic little device. Yeah, as you say, is a USB charged. Yep. Uh, one little charge. Pump. Apparently we'll do it about 80 gallons, which wow. is a lot of water. It is. It's a lot of water. Yeah. And that is literally fed uh, via a pipe. Pop that open from the water bottles at the back there. Yeah. So we've got two 10 litres. And that one is actually the diesel tank, the diesel heater. Yeah. Just using that for waste water. Waste water. So I can get rid of that when we get home. Uh-huh. Um, that's just spare gas bottles for the hob, just fits in there quite nicely. So on the other side, what have we got side here? Of it, we have assorted storage, storage, bits, storage yeah. and bits and bobs, but that side's where the uh, the hob sits when it's not in use, uh -huh. so it just packs away, takes up no room at all, mm -hmm. and obviously in transit it doesn't rattle around anywhere, it makes things nice and easy. Now we've got yes. the drawers at the top. But they're not drawers. But they're not drawers. Little cupboards. It's one big cupboard under there. Again, load of space. Loads and loads yeah. of space. Um, so originally we were going to do drawer casings, but the amount of space you lose with the runners and things, yes, it just made more sense. Just drop those on. 
and these are literally just to stop anything from flinging open mm -hmm. when we're on the road. Mm -hmm. um, diesel heaters installed and underneath you, you, the driver's seat. You put that in, didn't you? I put that and in. at some point, I want to look under the bonnet because there's a bit of kit yeah, that I think is a lot of people. Handy. Yeah, a lot of people put into separate separate, uh, separate tanks with the diesel heater. You put you you cut into the. Uh, Return. Got into the return line, which on these runs three quarters of the way down the tank, so it will never actually drain the tank when you're running it, which is handy. And you've got um, your electrics. Oops. You've got your electrics here as well. Electrics. So we've got heater, fridge, fridge power, sockets and lights on their own power, but that's an actual panel. You can just get into the fuse behind All there. All right. Yeah. Battery's down the back, but it's accessible behind here. Yeah. Uh -huh. Um. And a split charger, split as charge there. down there yeah. as well, uh, with breakers. Mm -hmm. uh, but that works lovely. Everything's uh, all quite nice on that. And underneath here, catches on. Looks like a cupboard, but that's actually where the fridge sits. Which yeah. twenty litre, plenty of space. And you, there's your and there's the battery, battery back under there, strap down there. Yeah. Like I said, this drawer does actually come out. You can just lift it off the runners, take it out. So if you need to get into there, it's just a case of mm -hmm. unplugging that from the back there, which you can access, and just take that away. You've got good mm -hmm. access into the battery area. Did it have a bulkhead in before originally? It did when we bought it. Yeah. Uh, there was a, uh, a fixed bulkhead in. So you're taking that uh, out. That came out. And a nice put, curtain. Uh, put a little curtain rail up, and part of doing the ceiling up here. There's it's just a void, there's nothing behind there. So mm. literally that was just a case of, that's a piece of pine that runs all the way along, just wide enough to yeah. go up and actually hold this end of the ceiling, because yeah. nothing to actually hold it. So that holds that up, but it's hard to put the curtain rail on. And at night, it just pulls straight across. Yeah. And you've, you've uh, you stretch, four way stretch. Yeah, this is the four way carpet. stretch carpet. Um, and easy -ish. yes <laughs> yeah it, it is fairly easy once you've done one section of it it kind of sort of gets a bit easier because you w figure out how much you can stretch because you look at it oh, it'll never do it when we did across there literally started in that corner worked to work across and the wheel arch you can just go it just pulls around it there's mm. that much stretch it just keeps its form all the way around, similarly with the rear door, so it's just one flat piece, you just push and feed. Now this is your first weekend away in it, you've this come up the to the first, lakes with us. This is the, the um, big test. <laughs> Any modifications as yet? A um, few little bits and bobs, nothing major, everything seemed to work, a lot of it's procedures like what order to get the bed out and, and things yeah. like that. Um, and you put um, netting yeah, I've got a couple of these sort of Stretchy metal Velcro metal. onto the, yeah. the carpet. So they're not um, screwed on, they're just Velcro. They're just Velcro either and side. It, and the it's sufficient work. to hold yeah, the crockery. A plates, yeah. bowls, so. chopping board. And well, that's easy, that's good because you're not, they're not fixed there. No, if, if, if you, you decide it doesn't, want, it. it doesn't work. Yeah. yeah. <clears> um, look, so we'll add a bit more storage above the benches because mm -hmm. um, there's nothing over this side at all. With that sort of thing, we didn't know whether it was going to work or not. Yeah. So it's worthwhile. And you've got boards in the windows that you can window, take out. They just pop out. So um, if I just scoot down down the side here, they just pop straight out. Yeah. So let's plenty of lighting. Plenty of lighting. Yeah. I mean, one of the questions I kept on getting asked was why aren't you putting windows in the sides? Mm. Um, and the answer is. We've got windows in the back, and that's where the benches are. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So you don't need them. Don't need anything in the side, and it's quite nice. It looks like a builder's room from the outside. It's got that proper stealth look to it, but without the uh, the bungs in. And again, they just stow down the side. Mm. Loads and loads of light and comes in. And you've tinted the windows yourself? Did a tint on it myself. <coughs> um, kind of did it the wrong way. Actually, carpeted the doors, then did the tint. And it's like putting a phone screen protector on. It sucks all the dust <laughs> and all the little carpet fibres, so there's little sort of yeah. squiggles all around. But the but glass again, is like scratched and that anyway from being a builder's van, so it don't really make any difference. But again, an easy job. 
Yeah. Not done um, it before. Never done it before. Not too bad. Watched a couple of videos. Uh, the place that I got the tin from, they've actually got a separate, this is how you do this. And they actually sell you a kit with squeegees and you get the proper, what called tin slime spray. Mm. That you spray on first. So. And I think it took about, about an hour and a half to do two screens on it. So not bad. I'm never doing it before. <clears throat> not too bad at all. Mm. Um, I've got a lot of 3D printed bits in here as well, hence sort of the door handle pulls and stuff like that. Um, Just tidy things up. Yeah, cause that's one of the things that was missing when we bought the van. There was nothing at the back, so it's just a little a piece of metal sticking out. So mm. um, that was well worth changing up. And it's really well finished off. It's really nice. Um, you've had you got foam. Um, four inch foam and it's medium density not memory foam but like foam that's designed for sort of bench seats yeah. and to be converted into yeah. bedding and um, you had those upholstered we've got these upholstered lo yeah. locally, locally. Um, the fabric <laughs> that we went for uh, we're going to actually go for fabric fabric but this is vinyl mm -hmm. but to look really? at it looks like Actual sort of fabric. Yeah. But they're really well finished. Like I said, yeah. guys that did it locally, they've been absolutely fantastic. Well, we were saying before that you spend most of the time sat on them or lying on them. Exactly. They need you to be need right, to, don't they? Right. So, yeah. uh, this stuff, it's something like 100,000 sort of seat actuations, life space. It's ridiculously yeah. sort of long life. So, yeah, it's absolutely perfect for it. And um, your diesel heater. Yep. is under the seat the driver's seat is under it the driver's seat so which down there somewhere down there which but again seat. you put it in haven't you yeah um, um again an easy operation yeah not too bad like I, said, I think the hardest part because the seat base on these um there's like two sort of pieces where wires clip to them uh so you just have to hacksaw a little bit out of that just so it clear the diesel heater but other than that mm -hmm. Really straightforward install. As I say, we'll, we'll have a look under the bonnet mm. at that uh, pipe that you uh, found, yeah, the yeah the, which, which makes life easy. easy. Such a so you're not, so. you don't have a tank no, on a uh, bottle on board. You, it's going into the fuel tank. The yeah. Fuel tank. yeah that's... Um, and obviously, with the size of it, yeah. literally run this for about ten minutes on medium, and you need to turn it off. It's pledge of warden off. You get it up to about twenty-five degrees in there. Mm -hmm. It's that quick. And you've still got the double seat at the front. Yeah. But you're thinking of Plan replacing that, that. Go for a single, so we've got a single either side and a walkway in between. So yeah. if we do park up and you have to move the weather's on. not oh, great, you, we'd have to go out to get back. Yeah, in. yeah. Um yeah, so that's one thing we'll beat you. Yeah. So on the cards. And I've got to say that I do like the colour scheme of the van because yeah. being a Warringtonian, it, it is primrose well. and blue, just like <laughs> so if you want to follow Lee's uh, build it's Project, Project Van Life UK Project Van Life UK yeah. um, uh, that covers it right from sort of the first night when we brought it back I went out and so just this is the van so you see what that looked like right from the start, start to finish up to where we are now with the first weekend away yeah. and uh, it still looks like a builder's van from the outside which is what we're after yeah uh, make it look completely self we've got pop the bonnet um the the pipe that i'm i'm impre really impressed with is down here yeah it connects straight on to you've got your fuel return for yeah. the main sort of diesel supply, which is that. And this little T-piece drops in, feeds off through the fuel filter, then down to the fuel pump, then that disappears off down to the diesel heater itself underneath, and there's a back up. But it's such a clean install. No diesel spillage or anything. It's on the return line, so there's no pressure. It just takes it as and it needs it. You're not cutting any pipes. It no. just clips in, in line. Literally in line. It's designed to clip onto there, so you unplug that piece, that piece clips onto there, that clips onto there, and then you've got your tee off, straight um, onto there. So easy, without... Really easy. Because I always thought, 
you would be cutting lines, pipes, putting T junk, you know, T yeah. joints in and things like that, but it's all there for you. Yeah. That's and it wasn't expensive. No, I think it was about eleven quid. Yeah. Um and it just saved a lot of hassle. I and mean, the other way to do it, like I said, cutting the lines and having to T piece in and mess around with it like that. And the added bonus is if there's anything ever goes wrong with the pump, it's accessible. I don't need to get underneath yeah. the van or anything to uh do anything that. it doesn't get in the way of any of the and there's no there's no sort of filling up diesel um yeah. bottles inside yeah. or anything like that. Chance of spillage on the inside or anything like that. So yeah it's keeps well, it really, yeah. really clean. Lovely. Well thank you. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. So and as we say Lee and Kate uh, Lee and Tracy came up to uh, to join us for a weekend in the Lake District and we're up one of our usual stops at Honister. But you can't go wrong, can you, with the views? <laughs>